Hi, you're Marlon, right? Yes. Nice, uh, nice meeting you. Well, nice meeting you. Um, you built this car, is this correct? That's correct, yes. So we're a team of uh, 23 students from the Technical University of Eindhoven. And we built this car to compete in the World Solar Challenge, which is a race of about 3,000 kilometers uh, for Australia, from north to south. So straight through the outback. And um, yeah, the goal is there to, well, actually you get judged on four parts. So how fast do you drive these 3,000 kilometers from north to south? How many passengers do you take with you? and you are allowed to charge once during the race and uh, how practical is your car and um, you can judge on all those four parts and who is the best who wins and uh, yeah with this car we won the race in 2017 and actually we also participated in 2015 and 13 and we also won those races okay that's cool great 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 accomplishment there can you tell me a little bit about this car like uh, the basic specs how far does it go on one charge? Uh, how many uh, kilowatts can you get from those uh, solar yeah, cells? Yeah, sure. So uh, this car can drive about 800 kilometers on a single charge on a sunny day. And from that, you get about 300 kilometers from the sun and about 400 kilometers, 500 kilometers from the battery. And the battery is 12.5 kilowatt hours. 12.5 kilowatt hours for how many kilometers that is? So 500 kilometers. Five, like. 500. Yeah. So you can, that's a lot less than a Tesla, for example. And that's because the a weight. A lot less, a lot less. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's because the weight of the car is really, really low. It's about. How much does it weigh? 380 kilograms. Including the driver or. Exclu or excluding the driver. So, yeah. And so, if you. It's actually it's a five seater. Uh, so, it's not really crammed solar car. No, it's actually quite spacious. And if you fit all five people in it, it the weight almost doubles, you know. So, um, yeah, it's a really light, lightweight car. Um, on the other hand, it's still road legal. So, we do have a Dutch license plate. Uh, so we can just drive on the Dutch roads, uh, which yeah, is it even yeah the more more of a real car even. All right. So um, when did you start building or when did you start this project? Uh, so basically every two years there's a new yeah kind of like a World Solar Challenge, which is kind of like the uh, World Championship for solar cars, and mm -hmm. we try to participate every two years. So the next car uh, will be uh, released in 2019 um, in July. Mm -hmm. And then we'll participate in the new World Solar Challenge again, which is in I think October 2019. Awesome. So, um, what were the or like what were the challenges in order for you guys to get this car to be so lightweight and so efficient? What did you do? So basically, the thing is that you have to optimize the car as a, as a system. So if you would take a normal car and you would put solar cells in it, it doesn't work. It's too heavy. It's not aerodynamic. Uh, so you have to rethink the concept of a, of a car. Uh, by making it really lightweight, so losing a lot of, using a lot of composites materials, carbon fiber, uh, and also using, for example, we use in-wheel motors. So the motors are actually in the wheel. wheel. Yeah. Uh, like on a scooter, for example. Yeah. yeah, electric scooters have that as well. And the advantage is that you save a lot of space and you don't have any transmission. So you save weight on the transmission, but also normally the transmission will introduce extra losses and you don't have these extra losses. So that means you have four motors, is that correct? Uh, no, actually we have two, so one in each front wheel. Okay. Um, but yeah, you could uh, have four as well if you want. Um, do, do you got a, a number on how efficient these motors are, like 97 or 98%? Yeah, exactly. The motors are 97% efficient. 97, right? Yeah, and so there's a motor inverter uh, in front of it, which controls the motor basically, which has an efficiency of about 99%. Uh, so the overall system efficiency is about 96%, uh, something around there. Um, and if you look at a Tesla, you would look at like 90%, even a bit less. Uh, so that's also a lot more efficient. All right. And uh, if we maybe come around here a little and take a look at the solar cells that we got on the roof of, yeah, sure. of this car, can you uh, maybe come around here and then um, tell me about uh, what you did here with the solar cells, the kilowatt peak that you installed and so on? So, so there's about five uh, square meters of solar cells on the roof, mm -hmm. and um, actually they're just monocrystalline. So they're the conventional solar cells you would also find on your roof, but they are highest efficiency in their type. And there's also an extra laminate over it, so it's like a protection sheet. This kind of plastic cover? Yeah, it's kind of a plastic cover, and there are all small, tr small triangles on top of it. Uh, which makes it perform even better. Yeah, that you can't see it because they're really, really small. All right. And it improves the uh, yeah the light. It actually can get into the solar cell even more, and that's especially beneficial when it's slightly cloudy. So actually, 
uh, solar cells, they it produce more energy when it's slightly cloudy. Also, you got some reflection. And not that hot, uh, right? Sorry? more efficient if it's not that hot, right? Yeah, yeah, so the efficiency really degrades when it um, becomes uh, more hot. I think it's about 10% for, uh, or 1% for every uh, 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, but during, when you're driving, there's a lot of wind flowing over it. Actually, the car is designed like this, you can see. Yeah. There's a lot of, yeah, air it will go over the roof, and that actually cools the solar cells. So, what, what, what's the number, like the index for wind efficiency you got here? Uh, I think the CDA is about 0 0.22. 0 0.22? Yeah. That's amazing. Man. What brought you to start this project? Was it uh, your professor? Was it you? Was it your group? Well, actually, it's really started by uh, the students themselves. So in 2012, I think two students, um, they came, but yeah, they, they were about to go to their doing a master's. And I think thought like, hey, actually, we want to do something in between. And then they also saw these solar cars and they also wanted to make one. Um, but then they realized that all the solar car cars are like one-seater, so they're not really practical. And they're, I mean, the idea behind it is nice, but you're not going to see them on the road. Um, so they wanted to develop something more, yeah, closer to the consumer, basically. More practical. More, more practical, yes. Yeah, so that's when they decided to uh, yeah, participate in the World Solar Challenge. And by coincidence, that was the first year there was a crew to class. So they don't only get judged on speed, but also how many persons you take. And uh, yeah, and all worked together and the uh, first car was born like one year later. So you, you won the Solar Challenge in 2017 and uh, before as well? Yeah, you so in 2013, 2015 and 2017. And for every race that took place is 3,000 kilometers across Australia, which is sunny, which is hot. Mm -hmm. And 3,000 kilometers is a long way to be sitting in any car. <laughs> Definitely. Um, did you drive this thing or like your colleagues? How did you manage to do this? Uh, so yeah, it's actually quite a logistical challenge because um, our team is about 25 uh, students mm -hmm. and actually during the race even more. And um, yeah, you, so you drive in stints which are like 400 kilometers. So you're in, like, in a car for like four or five hours maximum. And then you change drivers and change passengers. Um, but besides that, you also have all the uh, non-technical people. So you have the media cars, you have the, uh, people who check the weather, um, people responsible for the spare parts if something breaks down. And of course, we have to make our own food at the end of the day. We just stop at the side of the road. Yeah. There's literally nothing there. And then uh, we have to set up camp, make our own food. So we have to bring food for like uh, 30, 40 people and start cooking. So you don't drive this car 24-7? No, so we are, have to stop uh, at 7 p.m. Um, because then it gets dark and... Uh, sunset, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then it gets dark and a lot of wild animals will try to cross the road. So it's quite dangerous. Oh, yeah. So that's actually... No, no really airbags dangerous. inside, I guess. No, no, no. That will be... Uh, yeah, it costs too much weight. So sure. if you would bring it to the market, you would have airbags, of course. Oh, but you got a seatbelt, I suppose, because it's legal? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you need seatbelts, for example. Okay. And you also need some kind of uh, crash structure. So we did sure. think about that. Okay, so um, th this car is how many years old now? Uh, so this car is from 2017, so about two years. And Almost two years. you had uh, older versions before yeah. this car, mm -hmm. and what did you reiterate or change in between versions? Um, so actually the, the, the first one, it was a really efficient car, but we wanted to improve the, um, yeah, yeah, the, the basically the looks but also make it even more reliable. So it's all more sturdy, these versions, and uh, more features in it. So yeah, that's mainly where we try to improve. And of course, each iteration, we do improve the efficiency. Uh, but once you get at a point where you can drive 800,000 kilometers on a single charge, that's basically enough. I mean, people think that's enough. I mean, it's just as much as a normal petrol car. So. And do you have uh, companies, traditional companies, uh, politicians, talking to you about this car and asking you for expertise or intellectual property? Um, yeah, a lot of people, um, companies are of course interested in it and wonder how we can actually do this with like yeah. just 25 students. How can we make a car like this sure. in just one year? Uh, so they're really interested in that. Um, but of course, it's totally different from the normal industry. Um, so actually, uh, the students who founded this and a few others from previous teams, the alumni, um, they decided to start their own company oh, really? and to get the solar car basically to a commercial uh, point. Uh, so they started a company and uh, yeah, they're trying to get the first ones on the road now in 2020. But you're not a part of that? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, if, if I take a look at the form of the car, it's really, it's really 
basically built to cut through the wind, right? Mm -hmm. Aerodynamic, and uh, every every centimeter, every every bit of space is covered by solar cells. Yes. Correct. And how many do you have installed on here? Uh, I think it's about 300 in total, a bit over 300, and they can deliver up to 1,200 watts in a full sun, basically. 1,200 watts. Yeah. And um, how fast can you drive this car? Uh, I can go up to 130 kilometers an hour, so it can just go with the normal traffic. And uh, the the 130 kilometers, if you drive that, is it sustainable when the sun is shining? Do you, do you need more energy than the sun gives you back? So in that case, if you drive 130 constantly, uh, you would need some additional energy from the battery. Yeah. Um, if there is a really nice full sun, um, you can drive up to about 75 kilometers just on solar power. 75. Yeah. And did you see improvements uh, compared to uh, earlier versions of this car? Like, is the top speed now higher? Uh, no, so the top speed is about the same, because we think, well, 130, yeah, why would you want to go any faster? Um, and of course, if you want to go faster, it decreases the efficiency. So it's a point of where, okay, how much do you actually gain? Yeah. And how much efficiency do you lose? And if it's worth it, yes or no? All right, if we're talking about 75 kilometers, that you go about cruising speed for the solar challenge, and it's 3,000 kilometers. How long did it take for you guys to finish the challenge? Uh, so the challenge takes about five days uh, so to drive everything um, because we stop at night. So, yeah. Wow, amazing. And uh, you've just mentioned that some of your colleagues have started a, a company now mm -hmm. and that uh, some companies do question what you do and how it's possible what you do. Mm -hmm. Do you see the innovation and the technologies that you invented and built here going into commercial products? Uh, so yeah, sure. Uh, for example, the in-wheel motors, they see a lot of uh, companies doing a lot of research into it. Um, because you can save a lot of weight with it and a lot of yeah, components, which make, can make it a lot, of che a lot cheaper. Um, but there are some challenges with it. Uh, so a lot of research is done in that field, for example. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's very, very amazing stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.